What's up, guys? Here are the top five things that you should be looking forward to in the next patch. All right, so I've actually been waiting for the official patch notes to drop to finish this video, just because I like doing this sort of video with the official patch notes, something that people can actually see and connect to while we're going over them. So, uh, but yeah, but essentially this is how this video is gonna go. Uh, we're gonna cover the top five things that I think we should be looking forward to in this next upcoming, upcoming patch. And I'm gonna have them sectioned off in the video. I might actually upload each section individually as well, just to kind of, throw that out there but uh yeah and we're actually gonna start it off with argus so argus's kit is actually really interesting as to how you build them and how you're going to be playing him right so first we're gonna go into the description of the abilities then i'll give you guys the build that i found works best on him now we're gonna start off here with uh just simple on his passive now his passive is actually really interesting because his passive basically encourages consistent damage over time as opposed to as max burst as possible in a short period and i'll explain so essentially um his abilities apply a stack in this case they're calling it disintegration each stack lasts three seconds they do stack on top of each other so the moment you get a second stack it restarts the counter uh, it'll basically deal ability damage, and the math they give us here <coughs> is 2 damage plus 1.5% of the total magical power that you've built as bonus magical damage. But each stack that you get going upward increases that damage by 40% of the stacks. Not the, not the flat damage of the ability, just how much each stack is growing. So each stack is going to grow by 40% essentially, right? Uh, it is capped at 12 on jungle minions, so he's not going to be the best jungler. You're only going to be able to get 12 stacks on jungle minions. But if you're in a team fight, let's say you got a steel that's chasing you down or something, you're going to be able to stack it indefinitely. So you're going to see how that's going to lead into the build that I prefer on him. But let's start off here. His basic attack. Now his basic attack, nothing crazy. He's going to be able to hit 1.4 times per second. So it's okay. You know, decent natural attack speed. Uh, his, uh, his basic attack is going to deal 54 damage and then it'll increase 60% bonus physical power, which is pretty normal. All basic attacks in the game are this way. The cool thing to mention about this basic attack is the fact that the, uh, the animations, whenever he swings his staff around, the animation will come from a different direction, even though it's going to lead to the same spot. If that's not something that you're used to, get used to it visually because it might trip you up a little bit. Just make sure the crosshair is on the person. That's all you really got to go for. Then we have his primary ability, the Dread Nova. Now, he lobs an unstable orb of arcane energy is the way that they uh, <laughs> the way that they word it here, right? Uh, basically, all he's doing is he's lobbing an orb. This orb is actually very easy to aim. Uh, it's got really, really good range on it. I would say this is probably your primary engage ability based on the matches that I've been doing on him. Uh, upon landing, it explodes. It's going to deal flat damage. So starting at 85 power all the way to 185 and it scales 60% of your magical power. And it deals damage to all targets hits and it stuns them. So not only do you get to do burst damage with this, but you also stun everybody. Now, a second ability, the Ether Crystal. Now, the Ether Crystal, he's going to summon an Ether Crystal at the target's location for two seconds. The crystal will produce a storm that deals anywhere from 20 to 60 flat power, scales 18% magical power, and it will do damage every half a second to nearby enemies and slow them by 40% every half a second. So not only is this an AOE ability that does damage over time, which helps out his stacks, but it also uh, slows anybody in the AOE. Also, after the duration, the crystal explodes, or it implodes, excuse me, pulling all enemies within to the center. So essentially, the way this ability is going to work, long story short, is you can throw the ability. It's going to do damage over time, and if they're still in the ability, they're going to get pulled towards the center. And then we have his alternate ability, the Particle Shredder. Now, honestly, I think this is the bread and butter of his kit. I think a lot of people are going to be sleeping on this ability. Now, essentially, he's going to fire projectiles from his staff. 
up to 3.5 seconds so you're gonna click it you got three and a half seconds he's gonna throw he's gonna consume mana per orb that he throws each orb is gonna do anywhere from 18 to 50 magical power plus 10 percent scaling of what you've built so essentially you burn mana to cast nothing crazy now the crazy part about this ability is that when you max the ability you're now no longer limited to those three and a half seconds once you max this ability you're able to literally hold the right mouse button or i don't know the controller commands for it sorry but you're able to hold this ability infinitely you, you're basically going to be consuming mana per shot and you can stop shooting whenever you stop uh whenever you run out of mana now essentially be mindful the longer you shoot this ability the more your passive scales so the longer you're in a fight the longer you're casting this and the longer you're holding it the more damage you're doing per shot so uh that's gonna fall into play with the build that i'm gonna suggest here for you guys that i found the best success with now his ultimate is the synaptic obliterator basically uh, it says after a short delay he channels an energy up to eight seconds so you have eight seconds to cast these shots he's gonna be able to fire three uh, orbs that are going to be able to pierce through terrain and can travel up to five thousand units of distance to give you a reference the average range attack is about 15 to 1600 units of distance so you can do the math there you're going to be able to shoot this pretty pretty far the uh the the, cl the cleanest shot that i was able to land is you could hit somebody standing in the middle of their lane from being in mid river which is actually a is a nuts distance to kind of surprise somebody on now each beam is going to deal 90 to 170 plus 30 percent of the magical power you've been building it scales 30 percent and it'll be increased by up to 2.25 damage based on their missing health so not only do you get three shots not only does it scale off of the power that you're building but the more health they're missing the stronger the ability becomes so basically if you don't kill them with the first two shots your third shot is going to be doing max damage because you're going to have the most amount of health missing considering that you've landed all of them each shot also slows the individual by 60 percent for half a second which helps you line up that second shot coming forward or the third shot uh, it's very good for basically securing kills that are at a distance. Imagine a uh, Murdoch snipe that doesn't reach as far and you get three shots, so to speak. Uh, very, very cool. B uh, the enemy d doesn't really see it coming. Uh, very hard to counter, even though they can counter with like a shield or something like that, right? Uh, with a crest. But uh, it's a super cool executability. Just be mindful when you do cast this, you're fully grounded. You can't move and you are very susceptible to damage now you a, for example a grux can't pull you you can't be cc'd out of this ability but you can be damaged during this ability so be very very careful how or where you decide to cast because if you're in the middle of a fight casting you probably will get targeted because you're setting ducks so to speak now let me go ahead and show you guys how i prefer uh to engage with this kit and what i recommend Okay, so as far as the wave clear for this character, I, I gotta say he probably has one of the best wave clears that I've seen in the game, arguably even better than Iggy and Scorch. Now here's what you're gonna do as far as getting the best optimal wave clear for him. You're gonna initiate with his E, which is going to be his crystal. You're gonna initiate with his crystal. His crystal is gonna pull everybody towards the center or all the minions towards the center, excuse me. Then you're gonna hit your orb, which does damage and stuns, and then you clean up with your RMB. By the way, I am showing it with the uh, the, the new uh, Argus skin that they're releasing, which by far is probably one of the coolest skins I've ever seen on a character. Like, look, it moves, all the animations actually color change and everything, super, super cool. Now, as far as how you engage on a hero, very similar fashion, but you're gonna have to stun a little bit sooner in order to keep him in. Because here's the thing, realistically, if I throw my crystal, even though they're slowed, there's enough time for them to either use a movement ability to escape or there's enough time for somebody to be able to quite frankly walk out if they're not towards the center of it now there's two things to be pay attention to as far as this crystal goes the first one is this little uh center circle that you see whenever you're casting it if the enemy is in the center circle it'll actually displace them it'll push them away 
from the initial of the circle upwards away de depending on the situation right so one thing that you want to do quite frankly is position the crystal oh and behind them or let's say if steel here is pathing to the right i'm gonna go ahead and put it to the right of steel that way it's an object that you can't walk through he's gonna run into it let me actually do this to uh, make it a little bit easier probably should have done that earlier so essentially what you're gonna do is you're gonna place the crystal in the path that they're gonna walk through let's say like for example if he's gonna walk through this corridor back here i'm gonna place it to where he either has to walk towards my team or walk towards a corridor and then you're gonna have a short window before it'll actually pull in but for you to stop him from actually moving out of there what i want you to do is i want you to cast a crystal count one mississippi and then you're gonna stun him and you'll see why you're gonna do the crystal one mississippi stun and then he's forced to stay pulled in you're definitely you're gonna want to make sure that he gets pulled in and it gets exploded on for maximum damage so and then once that secondary explosion goes off then you're going to start with your rmb now the you the fact that you can continue holding that rmb for the duration of the fight is absolutely insane because it's all about ticks you want to keep applying constant damage to people right the only time that you ever want to let go of that rmb quite frankly is going to be if you see the enemies grouped up again and you find major like let's say your cooldowns are back and you find major use in throwing your feet and your off your Q and then your RMB again in order to kind of just keep the combo going. But as you can see, look at the damage numbers on the seal. The longer I hold it, the more damage it does for me. And that's the beauty of this uh, this kit essentially and this build because this build allows you to basically hold the RMB almost infinitely while doing as much damage as possible. So let's actually get into the build itself and why it's so beneficial. So here's going to be the overall idea of the build. The build is essentially if RMB, if your uh, alternate ability, the beams coming out of your staff consume mana, I'm trying to have as much mana and mana regen as possible. So essentially the build is going to equal us having 3020 mana when we're maxed out on all capacities. While the fact that we're regening a ton of it and I'll explain as we go. So first item, um, let's actually start off with our crest. Our crest is gonna be the Time Flux Band. Now, it basically it'll give you 25 magical power, 200 mana, which helps out our build in the end game. Uh, eight magical penetration, flat pen, which flat pen is always better early when people have less armor. And then percentage band is better, is better late whenever people are actually building armor items and such. And we do have percentage band here in the middle of the build and we'll go into that in a second. Uh, but essentially you're active your active is called turntable you're going to activate it it's going to mark the spot that you're at you're going to be able to move you get 20 percent increased movement speed for four seconds after those four seconds you're going to teleport backwards to that original spot where you activated it and it's going to reset all your basic ability cooldowns i'll explain why this is going to be so clutch on argus you're going to be able to activate it mark the spot that we're in we're going to go in activate our crystal activate our stun start our stacks so to speak right we're going to be able to initiate a big team fight because those are big aoe's that we're activating and then from there it'll teleport us back four seconds into a safe distance that now we're going to be able to free cast and that way you can initiate the fight for your team but you don't have to be tanking all that damage for your team our first item is going to be azure core azure core is going to give us 60 magical power 350 mana which again helps out our max mana so we don't run out of mana as quickly and 15 ability haste so we're able to cast a little bit faster all our abilities change stuff closer together which again increases our stacks now the passive for this ability is called font when you kill any unit you're going to gain five max mana again increasing our mana pool all the way up to 400 additional mana so this one item can give us a total of 750 mana realistically when you're done stacking once you reach max stacks with this item, you're going to be able to convert 3.5% of your total mana gets converted into magical power. I don't like the way that it's worded here. I know they have this whole new bullet point system. I feel like this needs a little bit more detail to explain that one. But um, yeah, so 3.5% of our max mana gets converted into magical power. So the more mana we build, the more damage we do. And this is a max mana build, so to speak, right? 
Now, let's go ahead and go into item number two. Now, item number two is gonna be Orb of Enlightenment. Now, Orb of Enlightenment is gonna give us 55 magical power. It's gonna give us 250 health, 250 mana, again, raising our mana pool, and five ability haste. But for each hero level that you gain, you're gonna gain two magical power, 10 health, 15 mana, and one ability haste. So the longer the game goes on, the more we grow our base stats, specifically our mana, which means that we're getting more damage, don't forget. And then uh, Art of Fortitude, every ability cast is gonna restore 3% of your missing health. So essentially, you're healing yourself a little bit by constantly casting. So that's gonna be one cool thing that this whole build is basically, it's encouraging you to cast constantly while you're also getting health back as you're casting. Now, be mindful this doesn't stack with your RMB, the constant infinite shooting. You are gonna have to let go and recast in order to heal, so don't get confused there. But the constant ability casting will slowly regen uh, your missing health over time. So it's all about staying in the back, being as distant as possible, uh, and just free casting your abilities and getting as that health back while simultaneously you don't really have to worry about running out of mana with this build because item number three caustica now caustica gives us 70 flat magical power nothing crazy there but a good amount the most important part it's now a third item three items in it's going to give us 40 percent magic armor penetration which like we said Flat pen was good early. That our crest gives us a little bit there. Percentage pen is better late game. So that way we cover both sides in case somebody's building magic armor against you. But most importantly, the second passive, Arcane Resolve. When you're below 50% mana, you're gonna gain 1% of your max mana as regen, mana regen. So essentially, the more max mana you have, the more mana region you get. And this basically gets to the point that late game, late build, you can hold that RMP and you basically will not run out of mana. You will see how insane of a combo this is because you just get to abuse and spam and just kind of go all out shooting. Now, our fourth item is going to be Megacosm. Now, Megacosm, uh, it comes in clutch for a couple of reasons. Now, it's going to give us a 75 magical power. It's going to give us 250 mana, again, increasing our max mana pool. And it's going to give us 15 ability haste so we can cast more consistently. Uh, the two passives are going to be Disintegrate. When you deal with ability damage, you're going to deal 3% of their max health as additional damage over three seconds. Additional applications just refresh the duration. And then the second passive on dealing ability damage to heroes deal 4% of their bonus health, bonus health as additional damage. So essentially you're going to deal damage based off of their health bar, which helps against big health bar targets, let's say like a Sevrog. But if anybody's building bonus health, with which a lot of junglers, a lot of solo laners like to do, or let's say for example, a mid laner that's building Orb of Enlightenment, this will actually be good against them also if they have a health based build you're gonna deal damage based off of the health that they're building additionally on top also. So it's very good at just uh, basically melting down sustained targets. And you're gonna have the additional damage towards the increased health bars that some people prefer to build as opposed to armor. Now, our last item is gonna be Oblivion Crown. Now, Oblivion Crown, basically it's a must on any mage if you're planning on doing item. Essentially here, we're gonna have 120 magical power. Flat gives us the most flat power that in the game while the first passive it's going to increase all of our magical power by 15 percent being mindful that your passive is already infinitely scaling all your ability damage so now you're getting even more ability damage scaling added to everything and your second uh passive is actually on a 30 second cooldown ability damage to the hero deals another 10 percent of their current health as magical damage so essentially every 30 seconds, you're gonna be able to chunk 10% of somebody else's health, right? Uh, being mindful, 30 seconds is a lot of time. Usually most team fights are done by then. So if you do have it ready, please be mindful that you wanna use that stack either on somebody that's got a big health bar that you can melt quickly, or if you see a carry with full HP, the moment you touch them with one ability, that's an additional 10% that's already melted and you melt that carry even faster because now you only gotta melt 90% of their of their actual health bar with the rest of your damage. 
So you guys uh, probably already noticed whenever we were going over the build portion of the video that the item descriptions themselves change. It's a lot cleaner, more bullet points, a little bit easier to understand in certain scenarios. But um, overall, all the items now are essentially going to be like, hey, these are your base stats. These are your passives. And this is what happens per passive. So I love the fact that that got changed. That's something that definitely was needed a little bit easier to understand. Uh, a little bit almost less reading, so to speak, because I'm not reading a paragraph to understand it. I'm just kind of looking at bullet points. It's a little bit easier to digest, even though you're basically getting the same information. So I do appreciate the fact that that change was made. And I think that it's going to not only be easier for new players to understand the game, but it's going to be also easier to make that split decision uh, as far as like which item should you build, whether I need more armor, whether I need to target a health bar, whether I need more percent pen, flat pen, etc. These little changes like this are going to be able to make it a little bit easier for people to build and for the community to grow as far as like item comprehension. So this is actually awesome that they did this and I'm very happy for it. All right, guys, so let's talk about some of the jungle changes that they've done to this game. I honestly think that they've added some little things here and there that are going to change the jungle drastically. And long story short, people are going to have to learn how to jungle all over again. So one of the first things that I want to show you guys is whenever you actually start attacking a camp, notice the health bar. You're going to see the health bar and then you're going to see a different bar beneath it. You see, we have the orange health bar and then there's like a like a whitish yellowish bar beneath that. Now, the whitish yellowish bar is actually a timer and I'll explain. You can now kite a camp out of its area and they will follow you until that timer runs out. And when that timer runs out, then they're gonna reset. You're gonna also get a visual indicator on the camp itself because it's blue until they exit and once they exit the camp will turn red that's how you know the timer has been activated and the moment that timer runs out then it resets why this is going to be a benefit this is going to be able to help you reduce the actual rotations if you time it properly now i'll show you what that's going to look like right now but another thing i want to point out before that is if you look at the health bar there is now a little v marker like a little triangle that's basically a smite indicator and now it turns red a full triangle that lets me know that if i smite right now it will kill so what i'm gonna do is i know that it'll kill now i'm gonna kite it out of the camp get as close to the next camp as possible and i'm already here interestingly enough you're only going to be able to see the actual health bar indicator on the larger units so as you see these little health bars they don't show the indicator for the smite but the bigger health bar on the unit does that's almost like a good indicator for newer players it's like hey you should be smiting the largest unit in a camp not the smaller units so that's kind of cool now i'm gonna go ahead and show you guys what these uh these little flowers are gonna be doing Okay, so these flowers are placed in strategic areas throughout the map, usually in either little choke points that you can make cool plays in or areas of verticality where characters that don't have verticality can use verticality. So I like the fact that they're adding verticality, more ver verticality to the map. I do wish that these flowers were a little bit more... First of all, I, I wish that the design was a little bit more visible. Even like a colorful flower, you know, like red flowers for the red side jungle, blue flowers for the blue side jungle, Enemy instead of a little pod, siege. so to speak. And I also wish that they showed on the mini map because these are timers that are very important to keep track of. I'm gonna show you guys what it looks like whenever somebody that doesn't have mobility, like a chimera, for example, activates a flower. I slap it, position myself, and it'll hurl me in the direction that I was and basically treat it like a howitzer mine. Uh, the howitzer mine that explodes and throws you in a specific direction. This is it's essentially the same way that it works. Now you're gonna have basically two of those pods per jungle and you are gonna have, uh, and when I say per jungle, I mean two on the red side, two on the blue side, and you're gonna have side lane flowers as well. So for example, let's say you're the solo laner, you're fighting over the buff or you're getting ganked. You're trying to get come up with a quick escape it's like okay let's smack this we're gonna go that way though bye i'm out of there so a lot of outplay potential is is doable within these right now one thing that i wanted to show you guys is how you can actually improve your clear camps so if you do it properly you're going to be able to start the red buff kite it out kill it 
activate this and shoot yourself towards the next camp. Like, look, I'm getting low third threshold. I'm gonna kite it out. A good jungler is gonna be able to kite it out. Smite, smack this, shoot me to my camp. And we're gonna go. And honestly, even if it's just that split second that you're shaving or that extra second here or there, specifically early, you're gonna be able to just do so much as far as advancing your clear and as far as just kind of having more map presence. And hyper junglers, let's say like Feng Mao, you're gonna have the Chimeras of the world, the Graceless of the world, etc., are gonna be able to use this like crazy and abuse it. I'll show you another example here. We're nearing the camp, right? And my mid laner is gonna need help from me. Let's say my mid laner is over here like, oh, I'm, I'm getting ganked or I got a lot of pressure. I, I, need, I need jungle help to relieve it. You know how it is. Mid laners are always gonna be asking for help. It's, it's the nature of the game. One thing I could do is in order to speed up my uh, tr travel time, I can immediately just use that to get closer to the enemy mid lane. You know what I'm saying? So characters that don't have movement built in are gonna be able to use that to be there a split second sooner unless they get in. Might have not been expecting that rotation from me. He might have been expecting me to rotate at a different time. But because that flower was there, I was able to cut down on that rotation time, be able to inflict a little bit more map presence and then keep on going about my way. All right, so let's say we're retreating. We have to escape and we're getting chased, for example. These little flowers also are in key positions. They get able to use them as escape decoys for characters that don't have mobility. All in all, I think that whoever masters these jungle changes as far as being able to hide the camps in order to accelerate your farm, your clear, your positioning, and using these flowers to do the same, those are the junglers that are gonna be thriving in this new environment and the junglers that are gonna be ahead of the curve. But it is a learning curve that everybody's gonna have to go through and basically everybody's gonna have to learn to re-jungle again. But I love the fact that they made these changes to the jungle because it makes it more dynamic. Next thing Omeda, change the actual jungle camps to be, so they're a little bit different. Now, one of the biggest changes that I think they made as far as this upcoming patch is the new Amber system or also called soft currency or basically a free to play currency, right? Now, previously, whenever you're unlocking a character, let's use that example specifically, uh, you basically either grinded for it or you paid with real money to unlock it. Now, granted, the amount that you pay in real money goes down based off of how much you had already grinded, right? But now there's also a third option based off of your previous grind that you've been able to do. You're now going to collect this new currency called Amber. Uh, shout out to the old Paragon currency. So essentially what's going to happen here is whenever you play at the end of every match, you're going to get some Amber as a reward. Now you can use this Amber to unlock a hero. You can and I think don't quote me. You might be able to even use it for skins on a future reference, even though that hasn't been confirmed. But I would love to see that skin implementation, even if it's just on this, you know, cheaper recolors or anything like that. Now, not only were they going to give us Amber based off of your level at the end of the season, like depending on how much you grinded this past season that just ended, you're going to be able to get bonus Amber, like, for example, level 50, 8000. Uh, level 70, 25,000, level 90, 43,000 Amber. Uh, so cool that they're giving you a little bit retroactive for this past season, how much you grinded. But all in all, the actual unlock for the heroes doesn't seem to be that much based off of what they were gifting. For example, a new hero is gonna cost you 10,320 Amber. And then any he other hero besides the new one, there's five different unlock stages. Some heroes, only have one unlock stage but some heroes are five unlock stages based off of grinding and stuff essentially amber is gonna you're gonna be able to pay with the free currency as well as pay with the premium currency if you ever want to now all in all let's say there's a hero that's five unlock stages right it's a level five hero to unlock them and then from there let's say you grinded it out for a week let's say you got them down to level two you're almost there to unlock them but you're like you know what I don't want to wait. So you're only going to have to pay 2000 Amber at that point. Or if you go to the level one, 800 Amber. So it significantly goes down per level. But the fact that you're able to speed up that process without having to grind by using previously grinded experience, 
as far as this free currency is awesome now but there's still the premium currency there in case you don't want to grind it all and you still want to pay for it i like that that's an option but i like the fact that there is a free to play i'm going to rewind the players that are uh, sorry i'm going to reward the players that are constantly grinding this game and trying to make the game better and help us out we're going to be able to let you use some of that free currency to do the unlock process as well now a little feedback for Ometa that I would suggest here. Uh, I'm sure that there's some kind of value, some kind of math that we have that, that they distinguished here as far as what each should be. I would always tell them, try to keep it a clean cut number. Like for example, a newly released hero, just put 10,000. It's easier for the viewer to digest. Um, level five, 8,500, you know, level four, 6,000, et cetera, right? Uh, it, it doesn't need to be like an exact math to it, you know, down to like the 20s, you know what I mean? Down to like the 10s. Uh, just make it a clear, easy number for people that uh, they're going to be able to easily digest it while simultaneously uh, it'll make it more worthwhile. It's like, you know what? Like, it's a little bit better for you to unlock at level four than it is at level three, because if level four is six thousand level three, let's say you make it four thousand a little bit easier to digest. Well, you know what? The difference between those two isn't that much. But the moment you get to level two at two thousand well uh, you know what that just went down 50 percent price that one might be worthwhile to just unlock at level two there might be a strategy that people go into it and you know whenever you throw like random numbers here like that it, it, it's a little bit harder for people to digest and stuff so you know to each his own i really wish there were a little bit just cleaner numbers so to speak even if it were like salesman numbers you know like like 9999 or 5999 some shit like that even that's a little bit easier to digest because people are used to it as opposed to 6020 or 3870 like they, they almost look like a random number so to speak so just a little bit of feedback there but uh, all in all, essentially, whenever you level up your account and whenever you play PvP matches or maybe whenever they add more ways, like say like daily challenges and shit like that, you're more than likely going to get Amber because of that. So that's going to be cool. I'm glad that they added it again because it rewards people that grind, people that play the game on a consistent basis. While if you don't play it that often and you still want to use the premium currency, you still have that option. But this is definitely, in my opinion, a better system that they've implemented. The question is going to be, how does it get implemented into the store, into the affinities, how everything goes, what the prices are going to be for everything. That's something that we'll see after the fact. And we'll probably talk about it on the podcast because the podcast is going to be hosted after the patch goes live. All right, and last but not least, they're basically giving us a new matchmaking system. Now, I'm not gonna bore you guys with the full details of this, and if you guys do wanna hear a full-length discussion, be mindful that we are gonna talk about this in the next episode of Predcast, so be on the lookout for that. We're gonna have a full-fledged discussion on it. But essentially, they're giving us a new matchmaking system, their old matchmaking system. It was ill-equipped as far as preparing proper matches. It was one of those things where it was trying its best to balance the games, but in doing so, it was basically throwing in somebody that was beneath the average lobby level because there was also somebody above the average lobby level and it thought that that would have been a, a good average difference, right? So hopefully this new system is going to be able to give us more consistent matchmaking, more even matchmaking is going to be the goal. It'll probably take a few weeks for the matchmaking system to iron itself out, but in its own, uh, this should lead to more consistent matches, more competitive matches, and hopefully a better experience for all. But again, be mindful be mindful that by the time uh, this officially gets released, it'll take probably a few days because this new matchmaking system is going to take people that sh are at a high level that shouldn't be, it'll bring them down. And people that are at a lower level that deserve to be higher, they'll slowly come up. But that's not going to happen overnight. That's going to happen over the course of, I don't know, let's just say like 20, 50, 100 games. Who knows the exact number? But the new matchmaking system is going to help basically irons everything out and make the matches a little bit more fair you just have to wait for the mmr curve to balance itself to this new matchmaking system but overall the fact that we've been begging for a new matchmaking system and they've been uh, missing it so much and they delivered it at the beginning of the third month of the year is awesome i'm excited to see how uh what the matchmaking is actually going to be like let's say by summer or three months on the road once it's had time to actually flesh itself out but it's awesome that they actually provided it and we are going to be able to see those results and hopefully be able to provide p feedback so they can keep 
tweaking their matchmaking and we'll go from there but yeah guys if you guys made it this far in the video i appreciate you this is a little bit of a longer video i wanted to make sure that we jam-packed everything into one i'm probably going to split each individual section into its own video maybe that's a cool little idea just have a larger one and then it's each little segment also but uh yeah i appreciate everybody that watched so far please leave a gg in the comments if you made it this far leave a like for the algorithm so the youtube gets recommended to other the youtube video gets recommended to other people and also if you could uh share the video with other people just let them know hey th here's a video that Wendy made uh, if you guys want to support the content that's probably one of the best ways to do it but as always i appreciate all of you and i will catch you on the next one peace